All right, welcome back, people, to MG Sports TV. It is May the 14th, actually, a Wednesday afternoon. Hopefully, guys are good are doing good and everything is okay. I want to thank you, thank you very much for your continued support. Really want to thank you for that. And if you're new to the program, if you're just joining the program, I would really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button and join um, the family. Um, if you're a long time watcher, view of the channel, please do hit the like button and let's continue to grow the channel. Now, I'm going to speak on a topic that is not controversial, but it's very, very sensitive, extremely sensitive. We're going to discuss the academy, academies in Jamaica. Now, there is this notion in the diaspora, specifically in the diaspora, that there is no youth development program going on in jamaica and i'm i'm i have to clear that up first that that is that is a lie since i've been in the youtube space doing football going around the country Trelawney, st james anova west milan portland st elizabeth manchester clarendon well i'm in st catherine kingston st Anne, st mary i've been to multiple multiple Football facilities, seeing multiple football teams right across the country. I mean, broad across the country. And I'm telling you, I have seen over 50 academies in Jamaica at the youth developmental stage. What stage I'm talking about? I'm speaking about from U8, U8, U9, U10, U11, U12, U13. And tentatively, for you go U13, you know, you have U14, and that would actually go into the hands of the schools who are partaking in school boy football from U14 and U16. But I'm speaking at the younger and the more tender age group. And I've seen multiple age groups. I mean, multiple. Now, I also, I've also seen primary school competition, U8 competition. U10 competition, U11 competition, U9 competition. I've seen multiple of these competitions right across the board. Kasafa has had multiple, multiple youth competition at that age group. So let me just skip. So the first notion about there's no youth developmental, um, youth development going on in Jamaica, that's wrong. That's totally wrong. And I can verify that. Um, you can go on my Facebook page on on my Facebook page and type in, just go on my Facebook page and type in Academy. And you'll see the multiple amount of academies I have done work with. KFA, Ballas. Um, to me, if I start calling them, it would be crazy. Multiple academies I've, I've done work with, especially even in the Kasafa region. And if I call some of my names, it doesn't make sense because you, don't, you won't even know them. But, just making it clear, there is is development in jamaica going on um for the youths now it might not be through the jff but these are initiatives taken up by coaches who want to run their program and assist in the development of some of these youths and this is not something that's just going on it's been going on for years it has been going on for years now we won't see the fruits of that labor no but maybe 10 years or so when things really, really hit, hit the ground running, we might see the benefit of those academies. We won't see it now. But for sure, where I'm expecting based off what I'm seeing right now with the, with the academies and the youth development programs that's going on, I'm projecting that in the next 10 years from now, we we're, were supposed to be outputting higher level, more intelligent, higher football and IQ, um, higher skill set, higher characters, um, uh, uh, characters for players. In the next 10 years, outputting in Jamaica. So our Premier League, even our schoolboy football system, will significantly become higher. At this present moment, there's multiple U17 competition going on. Kasafa is having a huge U17 competition. Even now, the JFF seek the initiative now to have a national academy. Mount Pleasant um, have their academy. Uh, Montego Beer. And remember the, the, the U17 program or the academy, pro, academy program that's going on, which the clubs were selected, I think, um, 
where the clubs were, I don't remember, but there was, there was about four or five or six clubs who were selected to facilitate some academic stru structure. That, and um, Portmore is included. So, just making it clear, youth development is going on in Jamaica. So, I'm clear in the here on that. Now, the dark part of youth development in Jamaica surrounding the academy and this is where it's, 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 it's very, very sensitive. Now, we can't just have any anybody out of the blues just get up and say they're creating an academy. We can't do that. We have to be very, very careful. Now, I understand that there's people who genuinely want to, genuinely want to see the football progress and see youngsters get an opportunity. But the reality of the world that we live in is there are people out there who don't have the best intention for our youths. And they will use those youths for their own personal benefits. Rather, monetary gain, sexual gain, whatever advantage they seek to take of these youths. That's the reason I'm saying it's very, very sensitive. Now, one thing I realize what JF, the J Jamaica Football Federation is doing, they're, put, they're putting certain stipulations or certain mandates in place so that these academies, these official are, these, some of the academies who are higher profile to be aligned with particular clubs. What that does, that allows the parents to have a little bit more comfort that, my, yes, my, yes, we know that we're okay with the academy, but at least we know that the academy are, are now governed under certain um, a, a certain club, not just a club, because you know we we can't stop everything. But at least there's a little bit more transparency on, on many many um, um, areas where academy is concerned or whatever particular academy is concerned. Because just think about it now, and I'm going to be very very um, frank and straightforward. The world we live in is a dark place. That is a reality, and not every smiley face we see. Is smiling for good intent. Not every one of them. And there could be a person who his intent is create an academy for sexual gain. And his intent is purely that. But because he might have some money, because he might have some connection, he can formulate that academy and utilize the need, these, these youths need for achievement or becoming successful in football to bring them in to the academy and then in turn have his way with them. This is a reality. This is very, very dark. It's, it, it, it is a reality. Now, we are crying. There's a lot of persons crying that we need more academies. We need more academies. We need more this. We need more that. Nothing is wrong with wanting more of it because it's beneficial to the country. But as adults, we have to be very mindful of just any, anybody just come out of the blues and said, you know what, I'm starting an academy. What is that person's background? What's that person's history? What do you know about that particular person? Especially this is for parents who are going to send their kids into academies. It's very important that you vet the coaches, are the managers of these academy very very important because at the end of the day the kids are the priority we have to protect we have to protect them we must protect them it's 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 a very sensitive topic but it's a, a topic that must be discussed must also be highlighted so not just believe that our academy just pop up out of somewhere and immediately i must get my child in that academy be very, very careful with the decision you make with your kids. Be extremely careful. Now, I would implore the, the, um, the, the Jamaica Football Federation to, have, to start putting some mandate where vetting is concerned of coaches, management, um, people who will be around these kids. So whenever, you, that's the reason why I say like, for example, like a club. And these, these academies are now assigned. Some of these academies are now assigned to a club. A club, what, what, what the club, whatever person is coming around the academy to assist or help, 
the club would do their necessary due diligence in vetting these persons and understanding this person's background. You, you won't know everything, but at least you're taking the precautionary measures to ensure the safety of the kids. Now, it's a very sensitive topic. Um, I do hope many persons will understand this, and I do hope this video reached the right person. Um, so I would implore you to share it if possible, because we have to protect our kids. We have to protect, we must protect the kids. They are the future. And we have to be very mindful of how we approach the market. There's a lot of academies popping up about the place. So we have to be very, very careful. The final intent of these people who are, who are pulling up academies. I'm not saying that everyone is doing it. All I'm saying is we need to know or we need to understand your reason for. Is it at goodwill? Is it for the intent of betterment of football? Or for just merely personal gain? Whether monetary, sexually, or whatever purpose that is. Anyways, that's it on, on, on this talking point. Um, it's not an easy topic, topic to discuss, but certainly it's a topic that should be discussed and discussion must be had around it. Big up on yourself, people. Thank you very much for tuning in. Um, if you want to support us, you can all, you can most definitely buy us a coffee and the link will be in the description, also in the pinned comment section. Um, that's one of the easy, well, there's two ways to help us. Hitting the like, hitting the like button. Well, there's a lot of we actually know. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join the family, and also becoming a member. And if you haven't done any of that, you can certainly buy us a coffee, co a coffee. And that would definitely help us to provide more content like this for you guys. So big up on yourself, people. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful evening. Take care of yourself. God bless. We're out. Boom.